Electronic access control systems can seem complicated and confusing. Sometimes all you need is a lock, and other times you need dozens of different pieces to complete the system. Let's start simple and put things into categories. All access control systems have three parts. Some systems have more than three, but in every single system, it's possible to identify three parts. They are the reader, the controller, and the locking device. No matter what system you're looking at, you should be able to spot these three parts. Remember that one of the main goals of any access system is to keep the wrong people out and let the right people in. If you were standing at a door and your job was to make sure only authorized people went inside, you would have to positively identify each person asking to go in, decide if they should be allowed in, and then let them in or keep them out. The same concepts exist for access control systems, where the identifying, deciding, and unlocking are done by a reader, controller, and locking device. Readers are usually a small plastic box that's mounted to the wall near the door. Systems will commonly use a card reader to gather information about the person. When a person approaches the door, they'll hold their card up to a reader. The card has an ID number electronically stored on it, and when the person holds it up to the reader, the reader provides the card with a little bit of power to transmit the number, and the reader receives it. Then the reader sends the ID number to the controller. So the jobs for the reader are pretty simple. Listen for ID numbers when people approach, and then send the ID number to the controller. In a typical system, that's all the reader does. The controller is usually a plastic or metal box that's mounted on a wall in a secure area of the building and has wiring connections to the card readers and the locking devices. It may also have storage to remember all the valid card IDs and the rules for access. The controller is like the brain of the system. It's the part that does the deciding. When it receives an ID number from one of the readers, it checks to see if it's a valid ID number and any other conditions for access, such as time of day or what door they're trying to access. If all of the checks that the controller has been programmed to do pass, then the controller will send a signal to unlock the door. The lock, then, is the part that receives the signal from the controller and unlocks. It might be a lock that you're familiar with, with levers and a latch, or it might be an electric strike, or a magnetic lock, or an exit device. There are many different ways to latch and lock a door, and good access control systems can support sending unlock signals to a variety of them. Like the reader, the locking device's job is pretty simple. Do what the controller says. Unlock, lock, beep, flash a red or green light. The locking device, for the most part, doesn't perform any electronic function unless explicitly told to by the controller. Furthermore, the locking device doesn't know anything about the reader, about the person getting in, or even what time it is. It just follows commands from the controller. Every access control system has these three parts. Many systems have more parts than this, but now you should be able to look at any system and identify the reading part, the controlling part, and the locking part. Now that you know the three basic parts and their jobs, you're also ready to know that these parts are not always separate devices, and the boundaries of their jobs sometimes get a little blurry. Let's look at an example. This is an electronic lock, but do you see the keypad and the card icon? There's a reader on this lock. Also, you can't see it, but inside, there's a controller too. This means that this lock has all three basic parts of an access control system all by itself. It can read an ID number from a card, determine if that ID number is valid, and unlock to let someone through the door. It's not wired to a controller. In fact, it's not wired to anything. These locks are often called offline or standalone locks, meaning they are not connected to a controller or a network system in the building. They stand alone and provide access control all by themselves. You may hear people talk about offline locks and standalone locks, and they both mean the same thing. So, when a lock is connected to a controller over a network, it's called online or networked, meaning that this lock can read an ID number and send it to the controller, but won't unlock unless the controller says to. 
it's not always easy to tell by sight whether a lock or a system is offline or networked. The lines can get blurry sometimes. Even though we can still learn where the three parts are, they might be completely separate, completely together, or somewhere in between. If this is starting to sound complex or confusing, just remember, every system will have three basic parts, and you can always ask questions or read the product literature to learn where the three parts are and how they do their jobs. For more learning resources, visit the training page at us.allegion.com.